Hi guys, it's Jamie here and welcome to tutorial three of our Stash Builder Challenge. I'm really excited to do this one with you. It's how to add napkins to make envelopes, tags, journal cards, you name it, but you're going to be adding them without glue, without wrinkles, really, really simple technique. Zern has very kindly given you a couple of free envelope templates, which will be linked in the video description. To get to the video description, where you start to see some writing, press the down arrow, it opens up and you'll see the link and the instructions on how to download those templates. Also in the video description, as well as our shop and other details, I do have my Kofi jar, which is my little tip jar. And this time I thought while you were looking at some of the makes, I would run through and thank the people who have tipped me. So a huge shout out with lots and lots of gratitude to Christelle, Gillian, Roseanne, Petals and Parchment, Meredith, Zern, Deb, Cherry, Caitlin and six of you who want to remain anonymous. Thank you so much. I have actually bought something with those donations and at some point I will find the time to make a short video tutorial demonstrating the product that I've bought and why I couldn't have bought it without you guys. So a huge thank you. It's been on my wish list forever and I've yet to crack it open because I wanted to do that as a tutorial. Anyone who's been following this channel knows that I am a bit of a napkin addict. However, I have learned a slightly more economic way to buy them, which is that some eBay sellers sell individual designs in sort of packs of four or five or mix up designs. Certainly a lot cheaper than buying 20 of the same design that you're highly unlikely to get through. Therefore, people who are surprised at the variety of napkins I have, that's my little trick. This video is one full of tricks. So as you can see, I've cut some parchment paper or greaseproof paper and I have a cheap brown envelope. I'm adding some sarian wrap or as we call it in the UK, cling film to the top of that envelope to make sure that the envelope is covered with that plastic wrap. I've cut my napkin into quarters and I'm just making sure that it will fully cover the envelope. And now I'm removing all the ply of the napkin. Some napkins have two, some have three. You only want the very, very thin top layer. Once I have positioned that top layer, I'm covering everything with some more greaseproof paper or parchment paper. I'm not sure what else you might call it in the USA. My iron is on the hottest setting, but without steam. The greaseproof paper, parchment paper, makes sure that none of the plastic wrap, as it melts, sticks to anything. And this is a way to protect everything, including your iron, while you apply lots of heat to melt the plastic underneath the napkin. And that's what acts as a glue. I would say you want to apply for at least a minute before gently peeling your covering away and then very gently because it could be hot lifting up the whole thing then you simply trim off the excess without actually cutting through the envelope of course and that is it that's how you apply a napkin to any piece of paper or envelope and it stays wrinkle free and you don't have a gluey mess everywhere. I'm using exactly the same technique to cover more parts of the envelope. Here's my pre-made envelopes that have now been covered with napkins. I made two using the same napkin so that I could slot one inside the other, either as its own little journal page or to be added to a journal page as a flip. 
I'm just going to quickly show you a couple of others that I've made. A white envelope with birds and roses and the Venice envelope that you saw me do earlier. I am going to be making some freestyle envelopes as I call them. So using exactly the same technique on a piece of dyed copy paper. I'm adding this beautiful blue napkin and bonding it to the paper below. This time, rather than cut off the excess, I'm folding it over and I'm going to bond it again to the reverse of the paper. One of the advantages of this technique is you are adding layers to very thin copy paper in this case, which of course helps make it stronger and thicker. I'm going to show you how I make a freestyle envelope, but don't forget you do have templates in the description following the links to the Dropbox. Having double checked roughly where I want it to fold, I'm going to use my scoreboard to score the initial folds down. As you can see on my second score, I'm leaving a reasonable gap so that when the envelope is folded over, there's some space to put ephemera in and out. I'm opening my folds back out because now I want to score vertically down the side of my envelope and I'm going to come in about, I think that's half an inch and do the same on the opposite side. Next, I'm cutting up that score line, the vertical one to the first horizontal score line and removing that strip away from the paper. I'm repeating that process on the opposite side and now leaving the center piece thicker, we're going to the opposite vertical to do exactly the same thing again. Here you can see the shape that we've made so that the two end pieces are thinner than the middle piece. I'm cutting the corners of the middle piece off at an angle. You don't need to measure this, they're not going to be seen. I'm folding the tab shapes inwards, which is going to give the pocket some depth or some width. And finally, in this video, some glue is being seen. I'm using my art glitter glue and a fine nib dispenser to just run along the bottom third edge to make the base of the envelope and seal everything together. I made two of the freestyle envelopes and I've decided to add some lace to the lip. I'm spreading some matte medium along the edge because I know that will hold the lace. Then I'm applying the lace and leaving that to dry. Here are some journal cards I've made using the same technique. I'm simply brushing them with some vintage photo so they're more generic journal cards for my stash building box. Because this is a stash builder exercise, I'm also going to make some tags. As with previous videos, I'm using my plastic card to make the tag shape, cutting the opposite corners out following my card template. I made this napkin piece of paper into a flip page by hinging at the back. I'm simply going to glue that onto an existing scrap piece of journal paper so that it's ready to go when I want to use it. I have also adhered some napkin to bits of book page. I've scored three of the edges at the back. I'm folding them up and that will give me some depth to a pocket. Using my fine nib glue dispenser, I'm securing those corners before adding it to that very pale blue journal paper. The hidden hinging has given that pocket lots of depth, which means you can get a little booklet in there or several journal cards and tags. This thin strip is going to be a side loading pocket. Again, I've already pre-scored those hinges to give it some depth. And now we have a pocket that's deep enough to hold several journaling cards and long enough as well. Those who have been following this series will have seen me do some very simple collaging before. This is actually a ticket that I created using an ink stamp on some dyed paper that I've just torn the end off and stained around the edges. I prefer to collage in odd numbers, therefore I'm adding this 
set of stamps that were just some free ephemera but I honestly can't remember where from. And my female figure, which will make a collage of three pieces, was fussy cut from a secondhand book. Under the Inspiring Ideas playlist, I am pretty sure there is a video with me fussy cutting different figures from secondhand books to replicate Tim Holtz figures without the expense. And there we have our very simple collage on a napkin background journaling card. Now I'm going to quickly run through everything I've made in this stash builder. You did see me make these freestyle envelopes and the simple collage I did on this journaling card. I've made various tags and cards because I don't know what journals I'm going to be making in the future. So I've gone for some that are just simply adding napkin or a fussy cut of a napkin and also ones that involve more collage style. Here we have a piece of kit paper that was left over that I've added some fussy cuts to. And to keep within that theme, I've added a fussy cut to my napkin double envelope. And also on the reverse of the paper. Here's our long side pocket again. I have made up and collaged some pockets without adding them to pages because I do have a small box of pockets that are ready to be stuck onto journal papers. And here you can see I've also done a very similar thing with a flip page and also a little booklet. You've already seen this envelope and this attached flip to the journal paper. Here's the envelope that got us underway today. And that is everything that I have made. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to check out the links in the description and I will see you next time.